video. Heather Trevar Tukai, your Slovenian citizen diplomat. The news broke today that Trump wants to revoke citizenship at birth for certain immigrants. So Slovenia doesn't automatically grant you citizenship at birth. What makes it so wrong if the U.S. does it? Well, there are a couple of big differences. Number one, we in the U.S. are a country of immigrants. Also genocide and slavery, but that's all the more reason to do honor to the people our forefathers murdered and enslaved. Number two is the Constitution. How do you get around that? I don't know, unless you just revoke the Constitution. In which case, I will be your Slovenian citizen diplomat from another country because I'm going to have to go seek asylum somewhere else. But in all seriousness, well, I mean, I am serious if Trump overthrows the Constitution, which is possibly his plan. We're all in a lot of trouble. Nonetheless, right now the Constitution still stands. And the reason we have this amendment is to ensure that the slaves that were born here and their descendants were treated as citizens, that they were, in fact, citizens. So it's a slap in the face. If you're a black person and you support Trump or any Republican who supports this, you're slapping yourself in the face and all your ancestors who were enslaved. Make no mistake about it. You can justify it all day long. You are voting against your own best interest. White people, just don't do it. Don't vote like that. Don't do it. It's just immoral. I don't care what party you stand with, it's immoral. So the other thing is, we just aren't like other countries. As I said, we're a country of immigrants. We have a duty to honor the people that we attempted to commit genocide on or enslaved in the past. It's a constitutional issue. And also it's midterm elections. So there are three things going on here. The first two are the most important, but the third is the reason that this is even coming up right now. And it's just wrong. Can he overcome the Constitution without invoking martial law? I don't know. From an academic standpoint, it would be interesting to see. I doubt, as an attorney, I doubt anything will come of it. From a moral standpoint, it's just horrific. So these are some differences. Now, from the Slovenia side, there's another big difference. Their Constitution actually starts with human rights, which includes protecting their ethnic minorities, the Italians and Hungarians, they do this via having co-official languages, making sure these ethnic minorities have special seats in the National Assembly and the federal government. Even children who are detained for their parents being in Slovenia illegally are, by law, supposed to be able to leave the detention centers and go to school. But you know what? That only matters if education is important in the first place. In the U.S., we don't even actually have a right to education. Not via the Constitution, we don't. Maybe we extrapolate it somewhere, but in the Constitution itself, there is no right to education. So my point is, Slovenia is way ahead of us. They have co-official languages to protect the ethnic minorities. What should we have here as a co-official language? Any Native American language and Spanish, absolutely. Maybe there are others, but definitely those for certain. Another thing with Slovenia is they're not a country of immigrants. They're not built on that. Slovenians in general just don't move around a lot. Melania Trump is the exception, not the rule. My husband is the exception, not the rule. Of the two million Slovenians in the world, most of them are in Slovenia. You're not gonna find a whole lot of them elsewhere. So they're not built on immigration, but they still feel compassion towards these people. And yeah, I am aware that there has been an anti-immigrant movement lately. I'm also very aware that many of the people in Slovenia do care about immigrants and have fought back against this anti-immigrant wave. I know that when the Syrian refugees walked down the train tracks from Croatia into Slovenia in 2016, that the church tried to help them, that the Slovenian government tried to help them. They chose to go on to Germany, but Slovenians tried to help them. So I think it's kind of like the U.S. While there are Trump supporters who are racist, who are nationalist, who don't want people who aren't white around, there are still a majority of Americans who are very much concerned with embracing diversity. But we have to do more, we have to do better, because otherwise we're going to lose what few constitutional rights we already have. 
the fact that he's even talking about upending a constitutional amendment is really, really scary. But it shouldn't be surprising. It shouldn't be surprising at all. So, why is the U.S. at fault for doing something that Slovenia does? Because we have different circumstances. We have a constitutional amendment in place. If you want to change this, you need to take it to Congress and take it to the people. Otherwise, don't. Just don't. And we also are a country of immigrants. And we are also failing miserably in the area of human rights. When I wrote an asylum brief for people from Honduras, I am now seeing from the facts that I gathered in my research in that brief, similar circumstances here in the U.S. We are fast becoming the country that we seek asylum from. So you can't compare us to Slovenia and say Slovenia does it, it's okay, or any other country, in fact, that does this. In Slovenia, no, you don't have birth automatically, citizenship automatically by birth. You have to prove you have a right to it by your parents. But Slovenia is a heck of a lot different than the U.S. So, is it okay that we're doing this? No. Should we do something about it at the polls? Yes. Should we do something about it after the election? Yes. You have to stay on top of it. Don't forget about it once the election is over, regardless of the results. You have to keep pounding away and make sure the politicians understand that you won't support them. The only thing the majority of politicians understand is money. And you have to hurt them, hit them where it hurts, which is their pocketbook. And where does that money come from? It's from all the corporations that give them campaign contributions. So, follow the money, keep up with it, stay at it, and don't give up. Until next time, Savita Mo.